this is Mrs. Often, and I'm glad to be here talking today about geometric sequences and series. We've already talked about general intro to sequences, which is an ordered list um, that usually is associated with some sort of mathematical rule, and general series. We've also talked about arithmetic sequences, which we get by adding a value or subtracting a value each time to get the next term. With the geometric series, it's going to be similar, except in a geometric sequence, we multiply by the same value each time in order to get the next term. Now, because we can multiply by positive or negative numbers, or we can multiply by numbers that have an absolute value greater than one, or numbers that have an absolute value less than one, that means our values can increase or decrease as we go between terms. So we'll explore some of that today, and we'll also look at two formulas for finding sums of finite and infinite geometric series. So as I said, a geometric sequence, that ordered list, is one in which we multiply by the same value each time to get the next term. This value that we multiply by is called the common ratio. Okay, that doesn't mean it's a fraction. It means that it could be a fraction, it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be an integer, a decimal fraction, or even an irrational number. The formula for a geometric series, if you want to find any term, a sub n, then you can take the first term and multiply it by the common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. It's so important to remember the order of operations here. Always raise that common ratio to the exponent and then multiply by the first term. Okay, first, let's look at writing an expression for a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence has r equal to 5 and a sub 2 equal to 10. Write the expression. Now, we want to write an expression of the form a sub 1 equals, or a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So, I notice that a sub 2 is equal to 10. Well, if a sub 2 is equal to 10, then that means it has to be equal to the first term times the common ratio just multiplied once. Hmm. So 10 is equal to a sub 1 times 5, and that means a sub 1 must be equal to 2. Our common ratio, fortunately, has been given to us. That common ratio is 5. That means that to find any term, a sub n, we're going to start by multiplying the first term by the common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. That means, for example, if I wanted to find, so this is the answer that I wanted. Now I can go ahead and use this answer if I want to find a sub 4. A sub 4 would be 2 times 5 to the 4 minus 1 power. Uh, 5 to the 4 minus 1 is 5 to the 3rd, or 125. So overall, that would be 250. So that means that from the second term to the fourth term, we've jumped that much. That's something you should know about geometric sequences. They can get really big really fast. They also can get really small really fast. So it is more similar to, and in fact, it's closely related to, an exponential function. Okay. You also need to be able to write an expression when you are given just any two terms in the expression. We looked at how you could do this given a geometric, or given an arithmetic sequence, and two terms of that, we're going to use a similar process for the geometric sequence. Here, I'm told that the fourth term is 125. And the tenth term 
is 125 over 64. Write the expression. Well, you'll notice I'm still looking for the same things. I still need to figure out what's a sub 1. I need to figure out what's r. So how am I going to figure that out? Well, I set up the same little list that I set up here on my um, arithmetic sequences. And I'm hoping that that will be useful again. I noticed that to get from the fourth term to the tenth term, this is six multiplications. So in order to get from the fourth term to the tenth term, I've multiplied by that common ratio six times. So I could write a sub 10 equals a sub 4 times the common ratio raised to the sixth power. Since I know these values, 125 over 64 and a sub 4 is 125, I can write a little equation and be able to solve for r to the sixth power. Dividing both sides by 125, I get 1 over 64 equals r to the sixth. I'm going to take the sixth root of 1 over 64. I'm going to make the assumption that it's positive. I could be wrong, but I'm going to make the assumption since I haven't heard anything else in this problem. The sixth root of 64 is 2. The sixth root of 1 is 1. So I'm going to say r is 1 half. Okay, so now I can go ahead and do this same process for um, finding a1. Alternately, because I have 4 and to get back to a1, I, it's so few steps, I could just divide each of these by the common ratio. So I think to myself, okay, what times 1 half would be 125? Well, that means term 3 is 250. What times 1 half would be 250? That means term 2 is 500. And similarly, must have started with 1,000. So that tells me that my final answer is going to be a sub n equals 1,000 times 1 half to the n minus 1 power. If I were to look at a graph of this, and if I were to plot these points, you would see that that curve would be going down like this. And again, I just want to emphasize the importance of using the order of operations and performing that exponentiation first that's what's going to help be sure that you get the correct answer and that if you get points to plot, you'll also have a graph. In this case, it's headed down like an exponential decay. Okay, so we've done writing an expression given two terms, writing just a general expression when we're already given some information. Let's talk about the geometric series. Now there's two cases that we can consider. The first, that's more general, is the finite geometric series. A finite series, as we've discussed before, is a series that has an end. It has a specific number of terms. So its elements are the first n real numbers. Or, I'm sorry, the first n integers. But we do not have to limit, really, how big that can get. It could be you know, millions and millions of terms. Fortunately, we do have a formula for the sum of a finite geometric series. Let's look at this format. I want you to notice we have our summation symbol. We start with i equal to 1. And it goes all the way up to n, our ending number. And this format here is a sub 1 times r to the i minus 1 power. Please check and be sure that all of your series are written in the same format before you just go ahead and blindly apply the formula. It can be helpful to write out the first few terms 
so you can be sure of what a sub 1 is equal to. Here, we're going to take our numbers from this expression, a sub 1, the first term, r here and here is going to be our ratio, and n is the number of terms. Okay. Again, you're going to have 1 minus r to the n power divided by 1 minus r. It's helpful to do this in steps, especially if you're going to be using a calculator, so that you're not just typing everything in and getting a really weird answer that doesn't make sense because you forgot to put the parentheses in. A sub 1, of course, is the first term. So we'll be using this in our next slide in which we'll do a finite geometric series in this problem. Okay, so here's an example of a finite geometric series. We are asked to find the value of the sum, as i goes from 1 to 12, of 4 times 0 0.3 to the i minus 1 power. Very first thing I want to think about is, is this written in the correct format? Okay, it is. i is 1, this says i minus 1. If I write out a few terms of this expression, well, I'd have 4 times 0 0.3 to the 0, that's just 4. 4 times 0 0.3 to the first is, point, um, is 1.2. 4 times 0 0.3 to the second power is going to be 4 times 0 0.9. So it's going to be 0.36. Okay, so I notice that this is trending down. I'm adding smaller and smaller things each time. I'm definitely going to get an answer bigger than 5, but I would guess I'm probably not going to get something a whole heck of a lot bigger than, say, even 7 or 8. So let's fill in a sub 1, r, and n. a sub 1 is 4. r is given here, 0 0.3. And n is 12. I've written my summation formula here just for ease of use. So my sum, which I'll write the English letter S, 4, 1 minus 0.3 to the 12th power, divided by 1 minus 0.3. Okay, so I'm going to do the easy stuff first here. I know my denominator is going to be 0.7. I don't know what 0.3 to the 12th power is, so I'm going to evaluate that with my calculator. And I get uh, 0 0.000000531. 000 000 I'll just subtract that from 1, and I get point, I get 6 nines. Okay, and then it's uh, 47 after that. So, dividing this by 0.7, I get 1.43. So I have S equals 4 times 1.43. And I get 5.7. Wow, it definitely looks like this isn't even going to hit the 7 that I predicted it would go to. Now, the first few times that you use this formula, and if it's easy enough to, and you're working with small series, it's a great idea to just check by writing out some terms and start to do that addition and see what answers you get. Keep in mind, this was getting smaller, so we've got a reasonable answer. If this R value had been greater than 1, it could have been much, much bigger. Okay. So finally, I just want to look at the formula for infinite geometric series. We can only use the formula for infinite geometric series if 
the absolute value of our ratio is less than 1. If r is greater than 1, our terms are going to be on this exponential curve. It's going to diverge to infinity for our sum. We're not going to go anywhere. So this infinite geometric series formula only applies when the absolute value of r is less than 1. Notice it is a little bit different. It has i goes from 0 to infinity, and it's a sub 1 times r to the i power. However, we have some similarities. I still have in my formula a sub 1 times a fraction. That fraction is 1 minus r in the denominator. The numerator, though, is a lot easier. It's just 1 over. So I think this looks a lot like the previous formula we worked with, but instead of having 1 minus r to the n in the numerator, it just has 1, a lot easier, and a sub 1 over 1 minus r in the denominator. So that's the formula for infinite geometric series, and we'll look at some applications of this formula in class. Thanks so much. Have a great day.